All right, so the purpose of this video is to give you a little crash course into how we do life groups at Manifest Church so that if you're interested in leading one or you're, you're apprenticing to lead one, you kind of know how we do things and why we do things because they're a very, very important part of what we do at Manifest. Now, if you've been part of a small group before, you know that they can fall into three com kind of common traps. And one of them is that life groups or small groups, the way they're normally led, kind of cater to the extroverts. And you know what I mean. When a group gets to a certain size, 10, 12 people maybe, usually the same two or three people do most of the talking because they're the ones comfortable talking in a large group. And the introverts kind of sit there and watch the, the more talkative people say things. And it, at very best, what's happening is the average person is piggybacking on what the three talkers are saying and thinking instead of engaging truly for themselves, or at least verbalizing that, right? So what you're having is a situation where most people are actually not engaged or feel too kind of intimidated to engage. Another one is that there's nothing wrong with studying a book other than the Bible from time to time, but, but many uh, Bible studies don't actually get into the Bible, and so you, you end up talking more about what do you think versus what does it say. In other words, what do you think about this chapter? What do you think about what the author said versus what is the Bible saying to us and what are we supposed to do with it? The third thing that often happens is that uh, well-intentioned leaders spend time preparing things for the life group, for the small group, and they do a really good job of that. But the, what that does over time is that it makes the others feel like they could never do what the leader does, which makes the life group or the small group inherently non-reproducible. In other words, someone would think, I could never lead a group like so-and-so does. So what we want to do at, at Manifest is, is come to life groups with a crystal clear focus. There's a specific reason life groups exist, more specific than many churches. So at Manifest, we talk about our Manifest mornings, or Sunday mornings, as the, the purpose of having a kind of ignition point. So Sunday mornings are designed to ignite discipleship ignite faith and, and get people to a, a place where they want to respond to Jesus. And then life groups are the community where that discipleship is shaped. So the purpose of a life group is to provide a community where that shapes discipleship for the people that are in it. All right? That, what that means is we don't want to create an environment where just the talkers talk. We want everybody engaged. In, in equally because the discipleship isn't just for the talker and they're not the only ones that have something valid to say. And that the second thing is we want people in the Bible because that there is no other book that can match what the Bible can do for discipleship. It's designed for discipleship. We want people in the Bible for themselves. And the third thing is that we want it to be reproducible. In other words, we don't want to be so dependent on the giftedness of a leader that you can't multiply a group without doing extensive training and stuff. So what I'm going to share with you now is an incredibly easy method that actually engages every single person, gets them studying for the, the Bible for themselves, and is reproducible both within a home and then also as we multiply life groups themselves. So what, what we're going to get people to do is we're going to get people to study the Bible in three different contexts. So this is also one of the strengths of it. The first context is we want people studying the Bible for themselves. The second one is that in, even in a small group, we're going to break into even smaller clusters where we're going to interact with each other. So we're going to study the Bible in a small group. And then we're going to come back together as a large group to study the Bible or just to kind of report back what we got out of it. So what this is going to do is going to give the talkers a place to talk in the large group. It's going to give the, ex the introverts a place where they can talk and engage in the smaller clusters. And it's going to push everyone into the Bible for themselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a book that, that I've prepared exactly for this. It's called My Small Group Bible Study Journal. And all it is is a book with blank pages. Mine's starting to get filled out because I'm filling it out at Life Group. But the, the blank pages are essentially going to walk us through exactly what I've talked about. Walk you through personal and cluster and then large group kind of Bible study. So let's get into that. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to give everybody that comes to your life group one of these books by themselves. Couples shouldn't share because again what we're trying to do is we're trying to get everybody 
to study the Bible for themselves. Now, when you open this book, you realize, again, it's really simple. There's just an intro page to kind of summarize some of what I'm saying here, and the rest are just blank pages that have room to write in. And that, this is the whole point. People are supposed to write in this. So what they're going to need is their own Bible. This could be on their phone. Uh, although if you get texts while you're studying, it's, it's really distracting. So a physical Bible is actually preferable. A pen and then one of these books. And you can print up. I'll give you uh, handouts with extra one of these so people lose their book or forget to bring it. You've got a handout. You don't have to give them a brand new book every time. So when you open it, uh, what you'll see is you'll see there's a number of different sections. So here's how we're going to walk through it. You start this study by the leader choosing a focus passage. So let's say we're choosing Ephesians 5. I think our life group did that last time. So you'd write in the top there Ephesians 5. Now, what is going to give this study even more focus and power for, for the members in it is you're also going to give them a key word or a key phrase. And the reason you're going to give them a key word or a key phrase is that most people, when they open the Bible and just look at it blank, they don't know what to do. It's like they freeze up. They don't even know what to look for. But if you say, we're going to study Ephesians 5, and we're going to study what it means to love Jesus. Okay? Or you're going to say, we're studying Ephesians 5, and we're going to study what it means to be light. Or whatever it is. And you, there, there's no right or wrong answer unless you can't find that in the passage. But what that will do is put a frame around the study that will enable people who don't even know much about the Bible to know to, what to start to look for. So that's really important. So you're going to give them a key passage as a large group. Everybody's together in the group. You're going to give them a key word, and then you're going to break people into groups. And they can choose their own groups. Uh, so what I often do is I choose a leader, uh, two or three people, four people, depending on how many groups you need. One's going to be upstairs. One's going to be a living room. One's going to be in the kitchen, whatever, however it works in your home. And choose, this is a cool thing. You can choose people that you think uh, you want to give some exposure to. If they really enjoy it, these could be potential apprentices later to, for when your group multiplies. And so you want to keep an eye on that. But uh, what you want to do here is the group should be of maybe three people, no more than four. Five, it already breaks the dynamic. So no more than four people in a group. Send them off to do the rest of the study by themselves or, or together as a group. Sorry. So what they do is they spend the first five to seven minutes as a group. They can be sitting together like on a cluster on the couch like this. They're going to take the first five or seven minutes and read the passage for themselves, writing down in the look section what they observe or what stands out to them as they read the passage for themselves. Give them enough time so they can read it get stumped, go back, notice some things, whatever. And so really encourage people, write things down. The reason is when the five or seven minutes are up, you're going to come back as a cluster and someone's going to start and break the ice and say, so what did you guys see? What did you learn from this passage about, you know, what it means to be light or what it means to love God or whatever the key word was. And this is this, the listen portion. So now we're going to listen in two ways. We're going to listen to what other people have shared. And by the way, if you're facilitating a group, it's good to write things down here. What other people say, it's a huge confidence boost when someone sees you write down something they said. They're like, oh, that was important enough for them to write down. Okay, so this is a time where we're going to encourage people to share what they learn. You can do it in a couple of different ways. You can all take turns. You can jump in back and forth. It really doesn't matter. But make sure you're drawing out of people, even the shy ones, even the new Christians who don't even know exactly how to study the Bible. And make sure you affirm the things that they got right. Just over and over. Just go, that's a really good insight. Oh, that's super cool. Way to go. Whatever it is, okay? Now, the other listen word in this is that we're going to be listening as we've done our personal study. As we're hearing what God has been saying to other people, we're going to start to ask ourselves, what is God saying to me? All right? So as we're having the discussion, you need to be thinking, and each person in the little cluster needs to be thinking, what is my takeaway? This is the next section. Now, you'll notice it's a really narrow section. There's no room there. You could pretty much want, write one thing, maybe two things. That's deliberate. 
Because at the end of the day, if all we've got is a list of cool information or stuff that we've learned, but we have no takeaway, we don't know what we're supposed to do with it next, this Bible study will not be shaping our discipleship. It will only just be kind of tickling our minds with new concepts. So sometime near the end of about 15 or 20 minutes, as we, we, we've done this as a group, five to seven minutes by ourselves, 15 to 20 minutes as a group, somebody needs to be asking the question, so what's your takeaway? Then spend a couple of minutes talking. I think this is my takeaway. And someone might need help. They go, I don't know. I don't know. But as we're talking, Michael, you know what, Bob? You know what? As I was listening to you talk, I wonder if your takeaway might not be da, 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 right? So we're learning from each other. We're engaging with each other. Now, this is huge because what you'll notice is every single person will engage in this part because the introverts feel safe. It's a smaller group. They feel like they can have something to vent, you know, they'll share their thing and you affirm it and all that stuff. It'll be awesome. But what's also happening is that they're talking about what they're learning. Most Christians don't know how to share what they think God's teaching them. They don't know how to talk about their faith. So each and every week, they'll be talking about their faith. They'll be studying the Bible for themselves. They'll be learning from other believers. They'll be learning to boil down the truth to a takeaway which corresponds to what James says about Bible study. Look intently into the word, listen to what it says, and then do what it says. So you'll also notice there's a, a place where you can talk about next steps. So out of your takeaway, your next step might be, you know what, I really need to call Phyllis, and I need to apologize, or something, right? If you don't get there, that's fine. Just encourage people to make sure that they do get there. Now, another thing you can do in, in this small group, you can also do this in the large group, is there's a small section there to write down prayer requests. So you, you could pray for each other, and this is something that we've done in our little clusters. So if someone, each person around the you know, couch has got a takeaway, and so you can pray for each other. Please help Bob forgive Phyllis. The next person says, please help so-and-so be a light. This next, right, because we're, we're using the takeaways as something to pray for. Or you can then come back now as a large group and do prayer requests as a large group. But the cool part is when you come back as a large group, now everybody's been talking. We've broken the ice. And so now you say, okay, uh, what did you guys find? And so one group will start and they'll go, well, uh, Jay, he was saying that God's love is, 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 an, is amazing and I, that God would compare it to light is really cool because then it can shine. And someone else might go, huh, our group didn't go that direction. Oh, really? What did, yours, what did your group find? Oh, well, we were focusing more on the fact that da, 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 and you end up having this amazing conversation. And, and what I've noticed even is sometimes the introverts who would never have said anything in a large group, they shared something in the small group that was super profound, and I would say, hey, Pam, why don't you share what you shared in our, our group? That was really cool. And now she's already been affirmed for what she said, so she you know, shares it with a larger group, and people go, that is a really cool insight. And so what, what you're doing through the process of this uh, time together is, again, you're, you're giving people a focus, you're encouraging them to study the Bible for themselves. You're encouraging them to talk about it. You're encouraging them to listen and learn from each other. You're encouraging them to listen to God and break it down to a takeaway. And then again, you're, you're letting the talkers, so maybe the talkers who love to talk, the extroverts, they're the ones who report back to the group. So they feel like their you know, love tank is full too. So this is an amazing, amazing way to do Bible study. What we've seen is that every single week, everybody's engaged, which is one of the things we talked about. So people are in the Bible. Number two, it's not catering to the talkers. Uh, number three, it's reproducible. Anybody can pick a passage and a keyword and say, go, break into small groups and go. In fact, even if the person's hosting or leading the group as a whole, there are other three other groups, four other groups maybe meeting. Another, so that you're not part of, right? You're not even, you're not even driving the discussion. So it's decentralized. So it's highly reproducible. Anybody can lead this. The, the next thing is that uh, it gives you more room to have conversations in your home before multiplying the entire group, right? Because when you get to about 15, for sure, there's just a few people talking and, and there's fewer and fewer people engaging. But now that you've broken into smaller clusters, everybody's engaging so you can get bigger and it still feels small. 
so that when you get to the re reproductive stage, when you're multiplying groups, you already have an idea of people who have led little clusters in the past and have done well or really enjoyed it, and you can maybe tap them about starting to host their own life group. So this is a real basic introduction to this message, that, or this, this method of Bible study, the C3 me method, it's three contexts, personal, cluster, and large group, that is amazing, amazing, amazing tool for discipleship. So I hope that helps, and if you've got any more questions, um, make sure you come talk to me uh, at any time. Oh, and there's also a small group leaders or life group leaders field guide. It's a printed uh, version of some of the things I've been talking about with way more information about life groups and how they work. So you're going to make want to make sure you have that if you're apprenticing it, 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 for sure. And if you're leading a life group, it's a good reference guide as well. So thanks for listening and, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.